break even. This presentation is going to look at the concept of break even and how you can calculate break even by using both the graph and the formula. So, what is break even? Break even is a point where revenue and costs are equal. At break even, the actual figure is a zero. You neither make a profit nor a loss. You are exactly in the middle. Now, some organizations will view breaking even as an achievement, others, well, if you are breaking even is not being an achievement, it all probably depends on how long you've been trading in your business, what size your business is, and what aims and objectives you set for your business. A new business typically may see breaking even as achievements. If they break even at the end of the year, they may think they've done well because it might be difficult to attract new customers at first, because the competition may fight fiercely against them when they open their business up, so they may lower their prices which means you're going to have smaller profit margins. So because you have to reduce your prices to attract sales, it may be harder to make that profit. So breaking even and surviving the first year could be an achievement. Whereas an existing business, such as like Mark Spencer's, may view breaking even as a failure because in the past they may have made a profit. They may have shareholders who expect them to be able to make a profit and pay them a dividend for their investment in the organization. So how does break even help a business? Well, typically it tells you how many items you need to sell to break even. So how many items you've got to sell in your shop to break even. You can use it to predict your potential future profit. So how much you're going to make. You can also use it to see how any changes in costs or your selling price, for example, is going to impact on your organization. So if your costs were to increase, how will it impact on how many items you need to sell to break even? Or if you were to increase your selling price, how will that impact on your break-even point? And you can also use it to make decisions within your business. So seeing how you might want to change and adapt your organization. So what is a formula for break-even? This is a formula that you need to be able to use. And it's simply fixed cost divided by the selling price minus the variable cost. And that's how you calculate break-even. Now, it's a fixed cost in total, and the selling price per unit, and the variable cost per unit. So let's look at an example and plug some numbers in. If a business has a fixed cost of £5,000, and each item it sells are £3.50, but it costs them £1.50 to make, let's plug those numbers in and work out the break-even. So we've got a fixed cost of £5,000. We know the selling price of each item is £3.50. We know it costs us £1.50 in variable cost, because that's what it costs to make it. So let's do the bit at the bottom first. That's our bit in brackets. So we've got the £2 at the bottom. So 5000 divided by our £2 gives us 2,500 units. And that's how many units you need to sell to break even. If you wanted to turn that into how much we need in cash, you'd have to multiply the 2,500 units to break even by the £3.50. And that would then give you how much in a cash value would we have to break even. Now, that's the easy way of doing it. You can use a table to break even. Now, typically, let's use the same example again. Let's show you how you do it. So, we've got our same example as before, but we could do it in a table. So, notice we've got a table. We've got number of items sold. We've got our variable cost column, our fixed cost column, total cost column, and revenue column. So, let's fill in our first column, our fixed cost. Really simple, as you can see. The fixed cost, remember, do not change with output. So it doesn't matter how many items we sell, we still have to pay £5,000. Nice and simple. So let's move on now and let's look at our variable costs. So our variable cost column is really simple to calculate as well. It's the number of items sold multiplied by our variable cost, or £1.50. So we sell no items, nothing times £1.50 is nothing. 1,000 items times £1.50 is £1,500. And then we go on and so on. And we complete our column all the way down. So then let's now work out our total costs, which is daddy. All we need to do is simply add our variable costs and our total costs together. So our fixed costs together to get our total costs. So our variable costs plus our to fixed costs give us our total costs, as you can see there. And then lastly, we're going to calculate our revenue, which is really simple again. It's the number of units sold multiplied by £3.50. So nothing times £3.50 is nothing. 1,000 units sold multiplied by £3.50 is 3,500 and so on. And we have now completed our table. So we need to put this data into a chart. What we need to make sure we do is draw a chart. So we're on our y-axis that goes 
to the sky, we're going up the page, we've got our revenue, and then on our x-axis it goes across, we've got our quantity sold. And what we need to do is plot those points from each of the columns onto a graph. And it should look something like this once we've done it. So as you can see there, we've now got a break-even chart. We've got our blue line as our variable cost, our red line as our fixed cost, and it stays the same. We've got our total cost that runs from our fixed cost. Notice it starts where the 5,000 is over here. Notice that point there. Because remember, we always have to pay our costs at this point here, either we sell no items. And then we've got this line here, our revenue line, that goes up here. And what we need to do now is mark on our break-even point. Now, the break-even point is the point where our total costs and our, to our revenue column crosses at that point there. So that is our break-even point, and we would mark it on normally with a little X, like you got there. And we might draw a line down there, and we might draw a line across there, so we can look at our break-even point. We also can mark on what we call our area of loss and our area of profit. So all our area below our break-even point, in this part here, this is all an area of loss. Because in this point here, the business is making a loss. Remember, previous to the break-even point, you're making no money at all. But in this part here, it's the area of profit, because you're making a profit in this part here. Everything you sell here now is profit. And that is all you need to mark on if you're asked to do that. Really simple. Nothing too complex to do. Now, you may get asked to do what's called the margin of safety. And this is a little bit more complex, but it's fairly straightforward. We mark on our break-even point, as you can see there. So we draw a line there. And then we need to look at what the current output is. So you can see, we know already the break-even point is 2,500, you can see marked on there. And we're told at the moment that the company is producing 4,000 units. So we mark on a line at 4,000. And the margin of safety is a gap between our break-even point and our actual current level of output. And in this case here, it's going to be 1,500 units. We're currently making 4,000. Our break-even is 2,500. So we are 1,500 units above our break-even point. That's our margin of safety. We can reduce our break-even point by 1,500 units before we get there. Obviously, if we go past that, we're going to start making a loss. So it's important to have as big a margin of safety as possible. So if we make some changes to our break-even point, we need to know what impact it's going to have. So if, for example, if we were to increase the selling price, what do you think would happen to our break-even point? Will we break even quicker or longer than in our previous example? Well, let's look at the example and make sure we understand where it comes from. We should, if we increase our selling price, break even quicker because we don't need to sell as many units. So let's have a look at doing this. So in our past example, we remember 2,500 is our break-even point. So this example now, I'm going to increase the selling price to £5 instead of £3.50. So there's the formula. I've done that. And I've worked out that break-even point is going to be 1,429 units. So we break even much quicker than before. Before it was 2,500. Now it is 1,429 units. Whereas... What would you expect to happen to the break-even point if I was to increase available costs? If I was to increase and give my workers, say, a wage rise, or if my electricity bill was to increase, or my telephone bill? Hopefully you can think straight away, this is going to mean that I'm going to break even longer. It's going to take me a lot longer to break even, because I'm going to need to sell more items to cover my costs now, this increase in costs. So let's do this. Let's go back to our original example. So... Uh, remember what I had before, I had £1.50 available costs. I've increased my available costs now to £2. My selling price is back to the original £3. So £3 minus £2 gives me £1. And then 5,000 divided by 1 means I need to sell 5,000 units to break even. Now I used to need to sell 2,500. Now I need to sell 5,000 units. So it's making it much harder to break even. I need to sell double the number of units in this case to break even. Okay, that's it. You should now be able to define the term break-even. You should be able to calculate break-even and be able to analyse the impact that break-even has on an organisation and especially changing different variables and how that impacts on the break-even of an organisation. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at BBusinessB and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Remember, you can tweet me at any time to get me to cover any areas of business that you may be unsure on. And remember to check out my website for bbusinessb.co.uk.